And one of the reasons why luthiers like to build the same model of guitar over and over and over is because they can resolve some of the design issues early on, and then they don't have to worry about them each time they build a guitar. With this particular guitar, however, this is a one-off guitar. I'm not going to build another one like it. Now, I may build them that are similar, but component-wise, there's going to be some differences. And as I was building this guitar, I decided to change and use a different kind of bridge. I wanted to use a, a hardtail that had more of a uh, more mass in the saddles to give it a better sustain. And when I switched to this particular bridge, I noticed that when I would lower the saddles all the way down to the base, I couldn't get the right string action. The strings were still a little bit too high. So I have a, a predicament. I need to make an adjustment somewhere so that when the saddle is down as low as it can go, the bottom of the string is just touching the last fret. The best way to do that is to change the angle of the neck. Now, one of the things that I learned about building acoustic guitars is that the uh, placement of the nut relative to the center line, as well as the angle, can have a huge impact on where the strings will end up over the body and at the bridge. So if, if I shift the neck just slightly side to side, it has a huge impact on where the strings end up at this end and how the strings uh, are positioned over the fretboard. Same thing when you move the nut up or down. Um, just very slight adjustments in that position can have uh, a big impact on where the strings will end up in terms of the action. So what I need to do with this neck, which is now uh, currently is completely dead flat in relation to the body is I need to lower the nut very slightly down so I need to, to create a slight angle and there's several ways that I can do this uh, the most common way that um, a lot of guys do when they have those kind of action issues is they'll shim the neck especially if they can if the neck is a bolt-on they'll just um, take the neck out and they'll cut a wedge and place it into the neck pocket and then put the neck in and that puts it at a, at a slight angle. And you can fine tune that angle by um, sanding the wedge until you get the angle just right. But the problem is it looks cheesy. You can actually see the wedge, uh, depending on the design of the guitar, you can actually see it on the side there. And even though it doesn't really have an effect on tone or sustain, although some people argue that it does, um, it just looks bad. So another way to fix it is to um, sand the angle of the heel so that at the front it's a little bit, uh, I guess, thinner than it is at the back. The back is thicker, so that puts the neck at an angle. And then, of course, you can sand or plane or, or file the, the, the neck pocket itself. And that's probably what I'm going to actually do with this is because if I try to change the angle of the heel, it's not going to line up so nicely around here. It's going to end up um, mismatched slightly. But if I carve that um, the, the, the pocket itself into a slight angle, uh, it, the neck will fit. So I'll show you how I'm going to do that. Okay, so I have the body clamped down to the corner of my little portable workbench. And what I need to do is I'm going to start by filing down just the front part of the neck pocket from about this point forward. And it's going to be at a very slight angle. And to do that, I'm going to be using, this is a Japanese Iwasaka file. And I love these files. Um, they're a precision tooth. I think it's chemically etched. Um, but it, uh, 
it allows me great control over the material that I'm removing. So I really like to use these. And what I'm gonna do, is, as I said before, is I'm gonna start out on just this edge here, the front part of it, and bring that down at a slight angle. And I put a piece of masking tape around here that's about a 16th of an inch below the bottom of the pocket. And that's kind of what I'm shooting for is to hit that spot. Once I get down there, I'm gonna gradually move um, or blend the angle back towards the back of the pocket so that when the neck fits in here, the nut will actually be um, just a little bit below where it currently is now. And that will allow the strings, because uh, it, 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 what's happening is, is I'm kicking up the heel and that brings the strings down right to the frets when the saddles are in their lowest position, so. Of course, I'll need to do a number of test fittings along the way just to make sure, just to make sure that uh, I'm getting the angle right because I don't want to go too far. Now I'm just blending the angle back into deeper into the pocket towards the, the back mounting holes. And I don't have to do a whole lot here to to get that done, I just want to make sure that there aren't going to be any gaps. I want it to be completely flat. And that's another cool thing about these files. The edges are um, ground flat. There's no teeth on them, and you know I don't wouldn't consider it to be a precision surface. But I can check to see if I've got the angle that I want correctly without gaps, just by using that edge. So it's kind of cool. All right, now I'm gonna do a final test fit because I think this should be about right. The, uh, the objective here is that when the saddles are in the lowest position, in other words, touching the base plate at the front, you want the string to just be kissing the top of that last fret. You know, believe it or not, the technique I just showed you for putting an angle on the neck is something I do for every single guitar I build. And it's not because I can't ever get the neck angle right. It's because I firmly believe that, that every guitar needs to be uh, treated individually. And you've got to, to test fit the neck and make sure it's going to give you um, the absolute maximum range of action adjustment and I want to be able to go from the strings touching the last couple of frets uh, to being as high as a quarter of an inch above it. That way I know when I sell this guitar to somebody uh, they're not going to have any issues achieving whatever action um, they prefer to, to play and um, so to do that I have to test fit every neck and make sure that um, that, that that range of adjustability is going to be there and if not I can it's it's so easy just to to do a little bit of uh, filing you know to the to the bottom of the neck pocket in order to induce a little bit of an angle in the neck and I think if you were to look at this guitar carefully and hold it in your hands you wouldn't even be able to tell there's an angle it appears to be absolutely dead flat and I think even if I um, put my angle gauge on here you know, it doesn't even register. So <laughs> it's maybe a half a degree of angle. Um, and that can, that's gonna vary depending on the guitar. And um, I know that uh, from experience, when you build a guitar because of all the sanding that you have to do and, um, or scraping and planing, it changes some of the relationships between all the different components. So what, on paper appears to be a perfect design, by the time you get to this stage, you suddenly realize, wow, that bridge is lower than I, than I thought it would be, or it's higher than I thought it would be. And so you've gotta make some very slight adjustments. And I try to build my guitars so that that's not an issue to achieve that. 
And then once it's done, everything's dialed in and you've got a guitar that um, can be tailored to just about any um, taste as far as, as action is concerned. So um, that's basically uh, the technique that I use.